and we're live. Hey, that's Brian. I get it now. After 23 odd years, I get it. <clears throat> I was watching or actually was listening to the uh, interview with Elon Musk and Tucker, Tucker Carlson. And I'm listening to the things, the questions that are being asked about things like lawsuits and you know things that would happen with, with, with social media platforms. And it all kind of clicked together, you know, things like the Epstein list and it all coalesced and clicked together. Everything I've learned about what humans do for control and power. That's what it boils down to, whether it's out of ego, whether it's some strange, you know, esoteric society where people think that they are the chosen ones to lead humanity to a new golden age or, you know, what, whatever it is, however many people it is, whatever. This trend of centralization, this energy of centralization, when you hear talk about global organizations, when you hear talk about the globalists, when you hear things about a consolidation of power, people behind the scenes, Excuse me. That is what's happening. You have people who are pulling the strings. And I think of the U.S. Like, I think it's unfortunate that political parties, but right now the Democratic Party is being used as the tool right now to advance these people's agenda the idea of it doesn't matter what party is in control republican democrat that party is going to be used to push through legislation rulemaking um rules laws, guidelines, regulations through regulatory agencies, three-letter agencies, what have you, for the purposes of a consolidation of power. If you look at things like the World Economic Forum, it's a uh, the meetings every year at Davos, Switzerland, uh, all these society, uh, like the, the, oh, what's the one? It'll come to me. It'll pop in my head. I see it right there. But all these societies that, uh, or these groups that, you know, are global in nature with the idea of bringing people together to coordinate ideas and activities and actions. Through all these things, people who are looking to, for whatever reasons, consolidate and further centralize control and, and what goes on with humanity, all these become tools for it where... You hear stories about how in a war you might have banks or governments or financiers financing both sides of the war so that whichever side wins, they're already in alignment and they can continue to use them. They've already got their thumbs, their feet in the door, and they can use whatever the winning side is to advance their tools. I think it was oh, Nathan Rothschild. Who had said, I care, I think the quote is, I care not what nation what nation control creates the money so long as I control it, what nation controls the money so long as I create it. Basically saying, you know, it's kind of like the concept of central banking. It doesn't matter what country's currency it is, as long as I have in, in control of the entity that issues that money, that's all that matters. And it's all sorts of reasons. Sometimes it is megalomania. Sometimes it's just ego. I want the biggest bank. I want the biggest bank account. I love the feeling of being in control. I'm an insecure person and I'm driven by psychosis. Uh, it's what I love to do. And I just want to do it, damn it. Whatever the motivations are. It's led to this point where 
I think of people like David Icke who talk about it. It's in, he has a more conspir conspiratorial tone and more nefarious motivation uh, and kind of flavor to what he says. But he, he points out a lot of valid points. Uh, Alex Jones, for all his madness, uh, he brings up points that very much show what happens as far as like a consolidation of power, what, what people would do towards those ends. And who knows the full scope and extent of things. It could be as little as, hey, we can push something in this direction and it comes in useful to we need to get lock, stock, and barrel control of that thing, whatever it is, an organization, technology. But when you see these drives, like why wouldn't we want access, for example, to online media? Why would we not want to have access to information? Why would we want not to be able to, to, to educate ourselves and know the truth and try and piece things together? The only reason to try and censor these platforms is to control the information. So it's like they control the media. Media was controlled. What, what got reported, what news got out, what was on TV, what was in newspapers, what was on radio and movies. It's the same. Now we're in the digital realm of the internet where everyone is a news outlet. Everyone is a node to pass on information. And if that can be controlled, well then, hey, the party keeps on going. Like, and, and selling things on, it's dis, we want to control disinformation. That's just the packaging. That's just the marketing material to, to that's the, that's, that is the sheep's clothing to sell the wolf's, to sell the wolf's actions of, we want to control and censor. Not, not the people who are going to give their consent and say, yeah, yeah, you should pass the law. We don't get to decide what's getting censored. It's the people doing the censoring. They get to decide. All they need is our consent so that, yeah, yeah, we can, it's legitimate. We can get away with it and they won't get pissed off and come at us with pitchforks and torches. That's all it is. Consent to allow people to create rules to rule your lives has to be veiled in consent. But ultimately the power, it's, it's our consent that allows it. All of the evil in the world came through our consent. Now, whether we were that consent was given under the guise of uh, being told something truthful or through deception, which is a lot of the cases, it's deception. And the internet, the availability of this information to share it, to broadcast it, makes it extremely hard compared to 100, 200 years ago to do so. And also with the internet, a lot of dirty things, a lot of things people are trying to do in the shadows, that's getting exposed. We're seeing that now. I wouldn't be surprised when the, uh, when the uh, Jeffrey client list, that gets published. Like that, that would, that would, that would just absolutely wreak unmitigated havoc on people who want to manipulate and control behind the scenes because all of a sudden they'd, they'd have to be held, they would be held accountable for what they did and why they did it because we're all living in the same fishbowl and decent human values are not going to put up with what these people are doing. And it's probably the same with, with, with our man, P. Diddy. <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably a dirty list too. Maybe not as dirty. If names get released, it's because it's not as dirty. It's not going to have that big of an impact. But this playing of teams and using whoever's in power to manipulate things behind the scenes. Candidates, you know, playing both sides, a lot of it is candidates are so, when they hear the, the, the phrase that candidates are selected, they're not chosen. It's that people who are going to play ball with these groups, they're the ones that become the candidates. Like in the U.S., that becomes a Republican candidate. That's who becomes the Democratic candidate. When you have people that don't play, play by the rules who, who are going against that, that's when they get shot. 
that's when they get killed, like the Kennedy brothers, like Martin Luther King. Uh, I don't know what Re if Reagan truly was, like if that had anything to do with it or if it's truly a case of random wacko gets in there and does his damage. Uh, but Donald Trump's, you know, and the attempts on his life. 2016, I remember the whole thing was people were thinking it was going to be Hillary Clinton versus Jeb Bush. Or as a famous, there was a fantastic meme that was like, merge their pictures together, their profiles into one photo, jabillary. It's funny. <laughs> but Donald Trump came out on the scene and he was just, he completely upset those plans. And so what was it? Well, we need to turn the people against him. So he was painted in the most horrible light. And because you had our team versus their team, the their team ate it up. And because these people had, you know, the people behind the scenes have influence in media, media amplified it. And so Donald Trump is the worst thing in the world. But he wasn't totally lying when he said, they're coming for you and I'm standing in their way. And I have no idea what he meant by that, how he meant it, what he knows. But that's accurate in a way. Where if you look at it through a lens of, hey, we're trying to make one world, you know, trying to make the one world government. We're going to consolidate things. And we're going to live in a uh, uh, technical, you know, it's going to look like China. You know, social credit scores. Why is that fun doing Alex Jones? Uh, if you look at it through a lens of that consolidation of power, where well, what if there what if there are people who, you know, with power and influence who are trying to consolidate control of things behind the scenes, these things fall into place, they click. And they take advantage of humans' goodwill, act through deception, and they play one team against another. Now I understand what they mean, how they play, you know, team A versus team B. There's nothing wrong with having a team A and a team B. That's that's part of human nature. We coalesce into groups. But the manipulation of those differences, that is where this nefariousness comes into play. That's where these, these people behind the scenes, whoever they are, that's what goes on. And I see the idea of like having someone like uh, Jeffrey being in the circle of influence that he is, you can get some very juicy blackmail material and you can use that blackmail material to help advance your cause, your agenda, your, 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 whatever it is you're aiming for your goals and getting people to go along and comply. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of people who are genuinely innocent, and forgivable, who have dirt on them because they strayed off the course and it happened to get recorded. It happened to get photographed. In which case, the people who are genuinely like downright dirty people and who deserve condemnation and have to earn forgiveness and make amends in a serious way, they're all in the same pool. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of those people who got tainted but aren't bad people are scared shitless. I wouldn't be surprised. And I get it that if you look at the tactics of like in the West, we're going to dilute culture, dilute national identities. We're going to bring in people who come from low trust societies, fast track them into nations of medium and higher trust societies, meaning more so Western nations. And we're gonna let the chaos ensue. And we've been seeing that for the last 10, 12 years, where instead of being people going through the normal standard immigration and naturalization processes where they are integrated to some way, shape or form into the country they are coming into. So there's some sort of cultural homogenization and harmonization. That's the word I was looking for. 
You just have people who come in, you fast track them, and they have no interest for it. They're looking for a free ride. Some of them are actually like trying to take advantage of, hey, we can get in there and try and make a better life for ourselves. Okay. But I think those people should go be going through the naturalization immigration process as well so that they can become a part of our culture, which is nothing wrong with that. Because if I were to go to another country, they'd probably get pissed off if a whole bunch of us went to another country and it's like, we're going to set up our own little culture. We got, we don't speak the native language. We don't follow any of the customs. We do whatever the hell we want, which is whatever we do in our country. It doesn't work. It's like moving into someone's house and not, not integrating with them so that you have a harmonious, harmonious relationship with everyone else. And how that's being used, well, people piggyback that, in which case they're getting enrichment, you know, earning money from contracts from, say, like providing jobs, uh, like employment agencies. Companies can take advantage of tax breaks to save money on, on wages and benefits. And then you also get the, the added right on bonus of we can put these people since they're more likely to, to vote however we tell them to vote, we can put them in places where we need an advantage so that in a few years' time, we've got votes locked up. And the idea of if you can create a one-party state, whether it's a U.S. state, a country, a province, a city, a county, when you have one party control of a government that's when corruption and rot and creating of the rules nothing good happens you look at it anywhere on earth in human history in the soviet union you had a one party state that led ask people who lived through that how much they in and are alive today how much they enjoyed that would want to go back to that uh ask people in countries like venezuela ask people like that in in essentially a lot of countries that had adopted a socialist format of uh, uh, structure of governance. A lot of those countries were one party rule places. I mean, if you look at them right now in the US, California, um, Illinois, you know, a lot of currently democratic states are like that where there's a lot of strong one party rule. Some Republican ones, they're doing the same thing where it's one party control and they're, and people are leaving because it's not a balance of power. You don't get a healthy balance of give and take where you don't need, you know, people say, well, you should have one party control because things can be done where they need to get done. Think about a household and how, when there's a crisis or in a family, if people, you know, care about each other, they figure out how to make things work. And if people have differences, common interest makes people figure things out. It takes longer and it's not the most direct path as if you had an autocratic ruler in that family or in that household, but things get done. And it happens to them on scale where we figure things out because if there's a common interest, if it's a pragmatic issue, it'll get figured out. It'll get figured out. You don't need to have an autocratic ruler to get it done because that autocratic ruler can also write the rules that benefits them and the people connected to them and the narrow few screwing the many which if any if there's any indicator it's like i don't know to what extent we you know if that happened in the west we would slowly turn into uh like china with uh social credit scores and the digital panopticon i think it would be a much softer version but it would still be there and that, that's not how we're meant to live. That's not how we're meant to live. That's how you subjugate people. When you do that, you are subjugating people. You're subjugating them. Because you're doing things against their will using deceit. Which, think about any interpersonal relationship you've had when the other person was being deceitful. Is that something you really wanted to be a part of? I mean, if you were taking advantage of the other person being deceitful yourself, what difference does it make? You're both damaging and hurting each other in the end. But for honest people, for decent people, that's not how we want to live. We want to be peaceful with one another. We want to live peacefully. We want to live in a high trust society. We care about that. We care about one another. We want to do that. So there's going to be a lot of noise. And just understand that... 
we need to be mindful of when something's being done and it's veiled and it's it's learning to not get caught up in the tribal messaging of whatever team you like and support. It's being able to stand back and going, what is BS? Who does it? It, it starts with, and Charles Hughes Smith always says this, the, the Latin phrase, qui bono, who benefits? Who benefits from a certain piece of legislation, a certain action by a regulatory body or some body or whatever it is? Who benefits? Because if you're seeing that, well, it looks like a narrow few people are benefiting from it, then you need to go further with that and go, why is it that I'm only seeing that? You need to apply your critical thinking skills. So there are a million one little tiny nodes of details that that built into this view I've just presented that have built into that over the years, but that's a summation. I, I, I hope it helps. I hope it helps you figure out that there are people who are lying through their F and T through us because the only way, because they're trying to achieve goals through deception. And sometimes we need to take a step back and something that we don't like may not be the worst of the two evils. And it's not, well, either team A or team B, and I'm going to pick the lesser of these two evils. Maybe it's a case of team A and team B, but the lesser evil is the one pulling the strings. So I'm wrapping it up there. Hope you learned something. Be smart. God help humanity and all of us. I really don't want to see this go down the tubes. We've come too far and we've done achieve too much and we're at a cusp where we can achieve so much so much wonderful stuff so many wonderful things that make such a f- absolutely beautiful world beautiful world beautiful world the one we know we can achieve but until we get past the machinations of those selfish few it ain't gonna happen so be kind to yourself be kind to one another as much as you can Hold people accountable. Don't be too rough. Take care.